20. Because that's all that road should bear. Yep. Well, it's funny they'll go 30 for it. And that's sort of where I'm coming from, too. Yes. Yeah. You should know children are playing, you know. It's a park. Yes. It's a park. So well, here. just children at play would probably yeah. be the best one, yeah. realistically, yeah. rather than a speed limit. It's really not a, it's more of a single little road connecting, I, right? But people, we have, are, people are using it. Like during the during the farmer's market, that's sort of the busiest time. Mm -hmm. But people are definitely they're going too fast. Mm -hmm. the big Probably the people down. that are doing it are parents. You know? Yeah. 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 Um, the swim program. We have uh, it's fantastic. Thir Thirty kids in the first session. They're coming in for the second signing up, but it's not as strong as the first one as of right now. They've got great weather for it. Oh my. <laughs> Got a question for you, Kevin. Is that dock out the same as it was last year? The raft? The raft, I mean, yeah. It, it's, I asked some instructors uh, what distance we kind of need for, and they said about 60 feet, 20 meters kind of deal. It's kind of that distance there now. What goes on sometimes, yeah. the nightlife goes it out further. Goes it out, hmm. yeah. Because to me, it um, looks like it's not out near as far as it was last year. But well, okay. That could be just they might might have moved it out last year. Yeah, well, yes, that's <laughs> yeah. the nightlife. I like how you put that <laughs> under darkness of night. Uh, the golf tournament. Uh, oh my God, it was hot, <laughs> but it was good. Uh, you know, we had uh, sixty-six golfers, so it was well. It was, you know, it, was, it was a great day. Yeah. I did offer to stand outside with a hose and hose people off as they came <laughs> in. Eagles Nest, the uh, Authors Festivals started last night, and uh, I understand it was at least close to seventy people attended. So it was good attendance. Uh, so that was that was good. Uh, other the markets are out on Lake Clear, Farmers Market, or I mean, uh, out of Beulah Beach, Beach and Wild Shore for the public beach, just to identify the the area. And other than that, I don't have a great deal to uh, do. You have any questions? Or... I, I don't. Um, the one thing I was, I remembered that there was something on our agenda here. Um, I know that this isn't necessarily your, your uh, department, but just so all the department heads are aware, we've had a request, the mural across from Rio that was approved a year and a half ago it's going forward and there's a request to do a mural across from um, the country store. So just if if council approves the the second one, just be aware that we may need some whippersnipping or just, I don't know what the state of the wall is right now. They have Chris, pictures. But Chris, Chris cleaned it, I think like two weeks ago. I oh. saw him out there with a pressure washer and everything. Oh, <laughs> fabulous, <laughs> fabulous. And I did see uh, a couple of our workers doing weed control that was requested from the community development group. So thank you for that. It really does make a difference. Oh, absolutely. They're, they're not everywhere yet, but they, they have, they, it's been a concerted effort. So thank you. Yeah. Um, Chris Hensbergner uh, was asking a question. He's looking for a signage down at the Vulture Caves, another little park on yeah. our side. Um, He's just wondering, proposing that if we purchase a sign that he'd installed. And what does the sign say? It says, uh, for shoot, uh, Park Bulger Valley, use your own risks, no rock, no creature or plant to be removed, uh, no overnight camping. He just. Oh, you mean. Just as you come before you get to the bridge. On, on the, left. the left. That's right. Is, has there been a problem down there, I wonder? I think it's more of a concern than okay. a problem as of right now. Because that's not a very big area there. No, it's, no. It's pretty no. small. Right? You have like three or four cars. Yeah. I don't think there's no picnic table or nothing there. No, no, no. There. no. But have people been overnight camping and leaving garbage behind? Like Chris would be somebody that would go and clean up. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So. That's if, on the left side of the bridge. Yes. Where, yeah, I saw like because the water is so high this year, there's always a like, pretty heavy traffic in there as well. Like every time I drove by for the last probably two months, you'd always 
There's always somebody. There's always someone in there throwing like skipping rocks and whatnot. Use the I think it's it it's could be the water. year, but something to keep an eye on, I would say. People do use it for wedding photos as well. Yeah. It's such a pretty oh, it's a, it's a, such a pretty nice location. Mm -hmm. Uh do you know what a sign would cost us? Like are we talking a hundred bucks? Uh, it'll be within within that reach, the yeah, the uh, maybe one fifty tops kind of deal. Maybe this is some if if Chris is asking for it, there's a reason, mm -hmm. right? He's he's not gonna ask for something that isn't necessary. Yes, Steve. <laughs> just, just remember, if we put a sign up such as that, then enforcement is expected. Mm -hmm. And to enforce that, we would have to add that as an amendment. To, I'm thinking probably the parking lot bylaw, uh, but enforcement would be expected. And we really haven't had any complaints yet. So may, perhaps what we can do, Kevin, would you mind going back to Chris and asking him what the concern is? Like, has, is yeah. is it a bit? Is it you know a serious? Thing for him like is he cleaning up every saturday morning and every sunday morning but the suggested wording no rocks the people picking up fossils or that it's also going on but uh, it's it's a hard li that, limestone yeah. cap there there's yeah. really nothing to be removed and you'd be, you'd, if it isn't broke sometimes don't you'd, fix you'd it you get more going across the other side absolutely there's a lot more walk on that side right and that's, I, I was more thinking about the no overnight camping I, but there's uh, really not enough room to open. I, I, I really haven't seen anybody pitch a tent. Do you want to do just, through all do the just push it to our August meeting? Yeah. It gives yeah. them yeah. We'll see. And maybe we'll just keep more of an eye on stuff. Yeah. Just kind of ask. Yeah. Perhaps just ask Get Chris. Some okay. Feedback from Chris. And yeah. Steve. Because Steve is right. It's another, it's in, it's about enforcement and he cannot be everywhere. No. He tries, but he isn't. Stay in the shade, Kevin. Yeah. No more golfing today. No more. <laughs> I put my binoculars away for the end. Yes. 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 <laughs> I, I always delivered the good news. No balls on the green. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much for. Uh, yeah. For, yeah. I see one on the sand truck. <laughs> 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 I don't know. Do we know where Bill is? Steve, go ahead. Steve's here. Steve, come ahead, Steve. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Steve. Yeah. Steve. Yeah. Steve. Yeah. Matthew yeah. Dean, the last I knew. Oh, okay. So that's another bit of a garbage issue. So, okay. yeah. Yeah. He, let's just squeeze Steve. Bill in later yeah. on. Yeah. Yeah. Whenever yeah. he comes. Yeah. Hello, Steve. Mm -hmm. hey. You've been a busy man. Not really. Just, yeah. All right. So, as we started working on way back in the uh, in the winter, uh, and Sandra has done worked her magic. So, whenever council is ready, that smoking bylaw is ready to move forward. Okay. Uh, Brian and I had a, a meeting with uh, county last week. They had a. They didn't have any concerns. It's just wording. They had a couple of wording concerns, which, all, which was all it was. So, did you figure out my the challenge um, by the curling club? Oh yeah, that's easy. Okay, because there is a butt stop there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's just if they have an event, yeah. then you don't. Yeah, yeah. You understand. And the good news it's on this is that uh, is the province is actually paying for the signing. Uh, and county is just waiting to get the signs in, and then we're going to get all signs. So that's going to actually save us about a thousand bucks in signs, so we won't have to spend our day on signs once they are so, Wow, Steve brought us good news. Like, yeah, <laughs> that, that never happens. Good news. <laughs> yeah, like, it's a good news. Bad that. news is coming. Always end with the good yeah. news, Steve. Yeah, Steve. Yeah. 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 Just so you know, and I'll be sending you a, an email, um, hopefully in a few days. Uh, we towed my truck up to Will's on Saturday. It broke down. We're not sure what's wrong. There's something in the driveline. That's all we know. Will and Tim, or Will and Jason. 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 Yeah. Uh, they're looking at it. I will email you to let you know oh, what, can't wait. what the deal is on it. So. Yeah, you should have led with that. The free signs you do at the end. It's like a brand new truck. Only 500,000 miles on this. Kilometers. Actually, it is a really good truck. 
and no significant issues, no significant issues. And that's just the information item. <coughs> and just for everybody, and I sent a memo around to uh, uh, to Works and to Kevin on that. County Health is reported an upswing in tick activity in Ranchi yeah. County, and that 33% uh, uh, of the ticks that they've tested are carrying Lyme disease. So we just have to be exceptionally vigilant. Uh, and I mean, Tom, especially our, our works guys and our, our, our summer workers to, to be vigilant. And for all of you on YouTube, check your pets when you bring them in from outside. There's a, a new, not a new, but the Lone Star Tick is yes, starting. Yes, they're in Southern Ontario. They're mm -hmm. in the Southern Ontario and uh, actually I heard of one in Quadville. And the, it's not good because if you get bit, it's it, weird. It's an aversion to red meat. So steak or die, Tim. Oh. Yeah, if, if you get, <laughs> I, I probably would. So that's so what happens? You, 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 you can't eat red meat. You can't eat red meat if you're bit so by that's the what forever? forever, forever, yeah. so forever. Forever, yeah. Forever. I said steak or die. Yeah. yeah. So take me at the pasture, guys. Yeah. <laughs> oh no! It's gonna yeah. be fish and rooster from there. <laughs> Speaking of roosters, yeah. the yes. The rooster? Tell us about the rooster. Oh, well, he has two now. Oh, yeah, rooster. He has two. Uh, yeah, he must have started cockfighting up there. I was speaking with the Crown Prosecutor this morning, <laughs> and uh, we're ready to go for uh, Monday morning. We're in court with him. So mm -hmm. we're moving forward on that one. Um, this is just this is just an information item. Uh, we have to do this every five years, the accessibility plan. Mm -hmm. uh, I did fix the, because uh, I had plagiarized some of it. Um, so I did fix those things too. Like Which the, the, the CEO so kindly <laughs> pointed out in a very loud voice. <laughs> the township of McNabry side. <laughs> no, it said it said the county <laughs> will. Oh yes, the yes. Yeah. I like that. I, uh, uh, plagiarism is the sincerest form of flattery. It is too. Except when you're doing your papers. Uh, two uh, WSIB reportable injuries in the last couple of weeks. Uh, one an employee stepped on some water. Uh, resulting in, in a, uh, a severe hamstring injury, uh, but the uh, the employee, being the employee that he is, uh, soldiered on. There was no lost time, uh, and he still soldiered on, even though he limps like a son of a gun after this hamstring injury. Uh, he's just, uh, I, I just, I'm in awe of him. That's all. Oh my gosh, <laughs> it was you. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, now we got a fat Steve on You're the back. <laughs> oh my, Brian, come on. <laughs> you know who. I'm sitting back there so quiet now. No, I didn't okay, notice scared. it was one time. I didn't notice it was one time. I did consider writing myself off the time. So. That, oh. Self. <laughs> and the other one was water. Water. <laughs> water. Water. <laughs> was water on the floor at the town. I think it went straight out and I went straight down. Um, you weren't the second WISB or at WISB 23? No, I was the first one. I was the second one. The employee tripped at the Sand Roadway site of uh, Freud. Oh. And uh, so there was two days lost time on that one. Is he all right? He's okay. Yeah, he just something with his ankle. Now the one that really ticks me off, and, and, uh, and you got that letter from OFMEM. I did not. It was in the package though. Mm -hmm. uh, but I didn't get it. I mean, okay. Oh, I thought. I'm sorry. I thought you meant it was addressed to me, but it wasn't. Uh, it was. Yeah, your worship. Oh, well, then it didn't. I didn't get it. So basically, in fact, say I think we were not in compliance in 2018. They said that our the training that we did was not uh, was not actual real training. Um, I'm trying to talk over with the lead. Oh, well, we spent five hours in here going over, you know, because we had uh, like I didn't get either. I didn't do you guys did. Yeah, it was in the it was in the package. It was yeah, in it was the package, yeah. And it just basically said that uh, um, it was in the committee wasn't it? based on our yeah. analysis um, of the information provided by myself, we determined that your municipality was not fully compliant. Uh, in 2018, because the annual exercise for the MECG was not conducted. Uh, so they I, I'm really... sorry, did we not get the exact same letter about 2017? Uh, yes. 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 As did other municipalities in Renfrew County yeah. and, in fact, the county of Renfrew. Yeah, because they've changed the whole system. Now, now that they're aligned with, uh, with um, uh, the Office of the Fire Marshal, uh, things have changed and, and the way they look at things have changed so all right well if you need any help battling that i'm in I, it's just because they're doing too they're they're changing yeah. up the ofmem quite substantially 
to the point that our fire departments now actually report to the PI. Yeah, I, I know. It's which crazy. is very odd. It's crazy. So, um, it, and it also because uh, it said I didn't do any training last year. I was I was was I supposed to do mandatory training? No, which I didn't last year. But. Shh. You're on YouTube. <laughs> um, I'm speaking with uh, Steve Osipenko right now, uh, but we're going to, uh, he hosted the uh, the uh, senior and elected officials course. Uh, we're hosting, it's called, it's the IMS 100-200 course, the incident management system course, which will be our training for this year. Uh, we're hosting it. I'm sending letters out to all the other municipalities and we're gonna, we're gonna host it. I, I think I should be exempt. Because I actually went through the emergency. <laughs> yeah. Can you sign my papers? Well, my IMS one hundred, two hundred. Yeah, I'm just saying that there's, you know, they will be exempt. You can you can train for an emergency all day long. You can train five times a year, but when you're actually in the emergency and you're standing on the side of a road and the water goes up since six inches while you're standing there in half an hour. There is no training that can ever teach you what you need to know in those circumstances and how you're going to deal with our with our population. So, so I think that's one thing that's really missing in our emergency training <coughs> is the human aspect. It's all well and good to sign a declaration and to be out there boots on the ground filling sandbags or or bringing water to people, but the fact of the matter is the human element of it, nobody can train for. You don't know until you know. And we're all talking to police right now about being exempt for 2019 for emergency. Yeah. Um, so, but Philippe is up north right now on the fires. So, oh, right. Of course. Once he gets back, right. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll lay a whole bunch on him. Anyway, that's, that's, Sounds that's, good. It's, it's not, I'm not really all that kid. I'm not worried about it. Though. Yeah. No. Uh, that. Let's talk about cats. Already, uh, so I sent you. So, yeah, you sent me the little. Uh, I got yes. the CC on that email. Thank you very uh, much for so your. Those are really the the, the three, um, uh, the three solutions. We're overrun with cats. Eagleville, Foymount, we're overrun with cats. Okay, so a few issues. Number one, people are dropping donated food off. Yeah. So there's a family that's actually feeding these cats, and now they're having kittens. Some of the neighbors have tried to live trap them, but they're not going for the live traps. So your recommendation is the trap and move, which I like as an option. Um, and I like the fact that you're saying, you know, if they go to a, a dump site, then that takes yeah. the, the rodent, um, yeah. mice and rats and all that, takes that out of the equation. So I think it's a win-win. It's about how do we do it? It's really not that difficult. What we've been doing so far is when people have been calling, I've been giving in traps. Uh, they try to tell them how to set the traps and yeah. where not to set the traps. Never set the traps on the ground because you'll trap skunks and that's not good. Oh. Um, so things of that nature. Um, I spoke with Bill this morning about, about the possibility of, of, uh, of moving the feral colony uh, up to the, to the Ruby Road site. Uh, so that's not a huge issue. There's and there's just it's not very expensive to set the program up and most of that pro, uh, most of the expensive I buy it in the uh, in the email is just more traps uh, to, to buy more traps and that's because I have two uh, we would probably have up six or seven and they're not cheap they're like a hundred bucks a piece for those traps so um, they're expensive yeah uh, trap neuter release is is not a, it, it's not viable it, uh, it really is not and I w I I wholeheartedly wish it was. One of the suggestions on social media was, could there be like a, um, a spay and neuter day that was $90 instead of $375, um, which I think is a lovely idea. I don't think the municipality has the assets to do this. And, you know, the last thing I want are, are for kittens to be. And it hasn't been proven effective, even in the big cities. It right. Hasn't been effective. And if anyone wants to do that, uh, OSPCA uh, Renfrew is running spay and neuter clinics right now. Yes. Um, and all you have to do uh, is, uh, is is have proof of income. Um, so that if you have a lower income, uh, they're actually doing it for nothing uh, or a very minimal cost, they'll, they'll spay or neuter uh, with proof of income. So is this a program that council would like to see 
go forward, uh, starting in the village and then perhaps moving it to point out? I guess we got to something, but I'm a bit concerned about if you're going to move it to the Ruby Road, there's people pretty close by. Well, right now there's it's no a sand road. Going to stay there. Uh, right now, the, the, the Carroll Colony is at, at Sand Road. Uh, and what we've noticed over the last two years, uh, since they closed the way site itself, uh, covered everything, packed everything down, is the cats are now migrating away from the feral colony because you don't have the rats, you don't have the mice, you don't have the rodents that were there that they were, you know, even though we've been feeding them all along, uh, you didn't have any of that there. So the last two years, we've noticed that a lot of the cats uh, have been migrating over there um, to the left and to the right. Um, well, that's what's going to happen. Yeah, uh, but that's why we said at the at the Ruby Road site, which is because it's a it's an open way site, um, and we've noticed that there is a number of rodents there, uh, and oh, okay. so you'll, you'll have to not at the transfer station. No, not <laughs> it would be sort of close to both. Yeah. So it provides a hunting ground. Plus, we're going to be feeding at the same time. What do you guys think? I don't like introducing anything into another. I, 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 that's true. I, I'm a avid hunter and trapper, and you start doing false introductions, uh, you start creating problems and well, just kicking the can down the road. And uh, I, I know what's in my head and what I'm thinking, and you know, I think, you're probably uh, thinking option one is a, is, a, is a better option, which is the trap, and destroy. Um, it is a permanent option, but I'm not quite sure I'm the person who wants to do that. No, and I mean, there's, 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 you know, they're, they're not, I'm not trying to be uncompassionate or anything like that about these cats, but it's, I hate to do, just give them to somebody else as a problem, too. Do, how many do we know are at San Do you have a rough idea, though? Yeah, the, the colony sort of regulates itself between 20 and 30 cats, and, uh, uh, and then we'll have some other wildlife come through and, and the colony will be decimated to, to, to about zero. Yeah. Uh, and then slowly on it builds up to about 30 cats a year. So. Like I, I'm not far from that wayside and I really have not seen any cats make it to my place. Uh, not, to, not to your place. No. Uh, but, uh, but Dave has had a yeah. number of cats yeah. come that way. Yeah, come that way. Yeah. The thing that protects my way is the uh, Herd's Creek, right? Yeah, yeah, they don't come across the creek. So, but yeah, fishers, coyotes, like to yeah, on them, so. yeah. Well, they'll, they'll that's clean what the they right? that's what they eventually yeah that's what eventually gets them yeah yeah. But but what are you gonna do with leaving them down? Is the other option? Well, uh, can we then you how like, can, can we stop food? the people from maybe. Yeah, but what do you know? They're there. Right? Like the only the only other option, like for example, at one of the apartment buildings in town, I had a tenant that uh, their cat got uh, pregnant to produce things, was four kittens. There's an organization in Ottawa that's a volunteer veterinarian group and stuff, and we had to drive them down there, get them neutered, and then they stay there, and then they get adopted. Is that a long-term solution? Not really. Not, Is it not for hundreds of cats? No, no that's the thing. Like at a waste site, definitely is it keeps their own population down so if even though i don't want to introduce a new species into an area I, it realistically it's probably the best long term is if we have it in town here you're just going to see cat dead cats on the road or more diseases get spread around food's going to get spread everywhere and they are hard on a bird population too they are extremely hard and i learned that in the forestry because they used to think it was logging that was destroying the birds in the area and realize there was all these cats in the area that were doing 1.5 to 4.7 billion birds a year absolutely it's unbelievable it was in your report that, is, that really I that read that they are the, the biggest staggering. predator on on yeah. the birds so i i have i have concerns about this on all levels oh, we all do i think my biggest concern right now is that we've just had a litter of kittens how long until they start breeding? Well, um, we, it is a serious problem. Mm -hmm. This is not, this is not the first time I've heard of it, but now it's, it's grown exponentially. Um, I, I think that your recommendation, Steve, is probably the best, but I will leave that up to, to council to vote on. Yeah. Well, in my opinion, 
the ones that when they were at the Sam Road site and when it was active seemed to control itself. Yeah. Now that it's not active, really the only thing to do is move it to our next active mm -hmm. site. And yeah. no to do it. In long term, if we do have a high kid in population, all you would do is we would just collect them up. We'd collect yeah. them all at once and then send them off, not to be killed, but to neutered and this and that. But you can find you can always find organizations that do it, but at the moment we might as well just transfer it to a functioning waste site. Well, wasn't we used to lie to our kids all the time? We're just gonna take them to a nice farm where they can oh, yeah. play all day. The traps used to go in the water. I'm scarred by that, by the way. <laughs> with our with our family, with our childhood dog. He's still there, he's still in the farm. Yeah, he's, he's yeah. Yeah, it's funny, but because we have a farm. <laughs> he's not there anymore. <laughs> Well, I he's think he's so much fun there. where he is, he doesn't want to come. I yeah. think he's buried there, actually. Yeah. yeah. I'm not sure. Yeah. I don't know. What do you think? I'm not sure. I think he said that. So we'd have to build a shelter farm with Ruby Road. Just, just a shack. Because we're only talking a six by eight shack, is all we're talking about. It has so. to be in the cubicle. Sleeping quarters. Yep. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Sleeping quarters. With cots. Yeah. Who's going to get this? Water? Hey. Yeah. Uh, no, we actually we, have we already have uh, a group of volunteers that, that takes care of them at uh, at San Diego. Yes, yes, yeah. yeah. So I mean, from a from a manpower standpoint, it's like other than picking these cats up to the trap and taking them out there, there's no additional really. There's no additional workload uh, on my part, really. It's Working your meeting, you call for the vote. <laughs> yeah, well, we really can't vote here, anyway. So we just have to we, well, we can give them a give give direction. Them, yeah. direction. We should probably see. find out from the rest of the committee what they yeah. think. Well, what do you think, Brent? Well, it's work. It's worked at the Sand Road, so yeah. just if it gets too high in population, where people are complaining out at Ruby, we can go to Column One. Yeah. It'll be Merv that complains because he's probably close. You know, uh, well, John, I John, John will be the closest. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I gotta let Ashley solve those problems. Steve, I also would, if you wouldn't mind, would you look into this program that Brent is talking about as well? I'll, I'll, I'll get the information. I'll just reach out to you and share it. I'll, I'll, I'll speak with Katie. She's one, the one, that we one thing too, uh, and and I've seen it this morning. So just remember, guys, when you have another false food source for another predator, it's like my neighbor down the road. Meredith, I was on my way to yeah. the tire shop yeah, this morning and seeing the fox come up and grab her chicken. So once you start introducing more feed, you have more predators, and now you get more predators that need more feed. So it's it's. A, I know you're trying to swallow well, the fly to get rid of the bird. You know, it's yes. a, can we bring the fox in town? <laughs> you can bring the fox is fine. Bring them in. You know, if you like, but it's, it's it's going to take you some time to trap these buggers. That's right. Maybe in the intro, because I know that one of the neighbors has been trying to live trap them. So maybe by the time you've got a few live trapped, yep. Brent will have the information for you for this neuter and adoption program where they stay where they go. Yeah. But because it, apparently these kittens are adorable. Well, well, right? Yeah. Well, yeah. I think exactly. Apparently until they start digging up your flower yeah. bed. Yeah. And yeah. But, yes. But, and that's the problem. But apparently yeah. they're really cute. But the bottom line, I think, is get the sand road stuff moved first so you have yourself, you move your colony and then import these that you have from town to, right? You guys, everybody agree with that? Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. But I think you have a two prong approach here. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Because the, the, the kittens in town might be really easily adoptable. And I, I know the person that you're talking about, and I spoke to that gentleman on a number of occasions, said, stop feeding them because you know like 15 cats come to your door all the time because you're feeding them. and somebody's dropping food off at their house they're dropping food. and that's concerned I mean, people I, <laughs> absolutely absolutely <laughs> nobody wants to see an animal die of starvation no but it's the location of it as well that's right you're, it, it really is a highway and we are going to have dead cats on the road and nobody wants to see that either but and, and and hence and hence what I say with the yeah. euthanization, it's probably the most most ethical way to do it, right? Because they're not starving, they're not getting diseased, they're not getting, you know, not to 
Yeah, but it takes them all out. <laughs> I, I, I grew up on a farm, and I and I, uh, I I know animals are. You treat them good, and you look after the ones for sure. But if it's a Mr. Chair, over a bunch of apparently Billy and Wright has a solution. I've been in the animal health business all my life. Why don't we do the other thing? Just drop and take them over to the now. Okay. Sure. Yeah. Where yeah. Are you? yeah. They're, they're, they're cool. feral cat oral contraceptives. <laughs> but again, we, oh, really? we run into a cost. And, yeah. And, yeah. You yeah. know, the cost can be something. It's like the, the, the trap neuter and release. Uh, a simple program has been cost me this way. We're somewhere around fifty thousand dollars a year to run mm -hmm. such a program, uh, and, the, and the cost is to, you know, if, if we're not Toronto or Burlington, something they can sort of swallow fifty thousand dollars without breaking a sweat. To my knowledge, these are pretty cheap. You just put it in the food of the cats that just feed. I'll speak for a minute about yeah. the new yeah. stuff in a final hospital. Yeah. Yeah, we'll, I'll speak for just another option to look at. Yeah. 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 all your boxes. Yeah, certainly. I'll, I'll speak to our about that. So I'll, now you've I'll, got a three-pronged approach. Yeah. Four. 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 Let's go with three. Okay, four. Just, yeah, but I would, I'd really yeah. like to see the, the kittens adopted if, yeah. if, you, if this program would work out. Yes. I'll be not by good. And I'm a, I'm not even a cat person. I'm a dog person. No, no, but the ones that are existing, for sure, like, you know, you wouldn't find them a place, but like I say, once you would start introducing them into different yeah. areas and then they go wild, though the kittens have kittens and have kittens and have kittens. And yeah. It just keeps going. And big batches. Okay, Steve. I mean, you can Thanks, Steve. Right. Thanks, have Steve. Have a nice day, Steve. To Bill. You have any cats, Bill? Uh, okay. Bill doesn't have cats. He's taking care of them. How you doing? Good. Yeah, okay. I got one that goes out at night, and already this summer there's two dead birds on the <laughs> Bill, you also did not buy me the seven hundred dollar Google Play gift. No, card. I apologize for that. <laughs> Nobody asked me for it. Oh, I'm sure you got it. Yeah, it'd be in your email. It. Oh yeah. What do you got for us, Bill? Very little, I think. Uh, everyone had a chance to read my report. Yes, we did. Okay. Uh, We've had uh, some issues, as uh, as you're aware of, uh, about these free passes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What? Uh, how does council feel about the suggestion put forward? Yeah, I like this. It's, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's consistent. Like when, uh, like in our empire, where he's like for some of the properties there, they're consistent. Like if you have like one dump pass is for like an F one hundred and fifty, and then or one dump pass for like a four by eight trailer. Like that's what it's always. They don't have scales there, but the five hundred it makes sense yeah. for like an F one hundred and fifty well, load. I think five hundred and fifty works out to about a uh, one thousand two hundred pounds roughly. Mm -hmm. So yeah. you know if you can put that on a half ton, you got a good jag on it. And, yeah. Uh, yeah, I I thought that was a mistake. I thought you meant five hundred and fifty pounds. No, no so pages. yeah, um, that's I I totally agree. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and and it was one of my questions for you. So. So, uh, I guess, do we need a resolution for that, Mr. Martin? Or Yeah, I think we should have a resolution as part of policy amendment in accordance with the recommendation brought to the staff. Okay. That's just a change to our Schedule A, though, right? Yep. Okay. okay, so what we'll do is uh, we'll just get uh, a sign, small sign, printed up, post it at the waste site. Make sure that everyone is aware. We'll get it on Facebook as well, too, okay. and uh, try and, uh, you know, uh, promote it. But for the better part, when you do look at a lot of the free vouchers, you do see uh, they're not very much like uh, 100 kgs, 200 kgs, like very minimal. Have you talked to anybody? To, I know I've taken a pickup load of shingles before on the, on, on the back of a pickup. I, I can't remember what the weight of that was. Uh, has anybody given you a, a rough idea what those would weigh? Uh, they're saying that they weigh about 30, uh, 30 pounds, roughly 25 to 30 pounds uh, a bundle. What you look at? 70 pounds a bundle. I just put a whole room. Yeah, they range from 60 to 80 pounds a bundle. So a bundle, and so how many? 33 square feet. 70 pounds a bundle, 70 bundles, yes. 4,900 pounds. 
I had no idea we had so many roof experts in this room. This I is amazing. And Fred knows how many square feet. Plus, and that's awesome. Three, three per square. I did half of my roof in one pickup load. So I'd be I wouldn't have enough room in my pickup then. So but wait. 70 pounds or 60? 60 to 70 pounds, depending on the bundles. Some of them are let's say 60. Depending on the weight of the shingles. You're talking 20 bundles of shingles. Yeah. Yeah, and how so many you're, square you're feet is that? Quarter of your roof. Pardon me. Thirty-two square feet to a bundle. So we're still. still it's more. Light. I I think it's more design though. Like yeah. when I look at it, like it's consistent with other municipalities. I find is the fact that it's more designed for like your mattresses, your couches, like large large items that are like they're bulky because we don't pick it up at the road. Like shingles is kind of one of those. It's just because it's. So spring heavy. it's yeah. it's heavy and stuff that's right but that's where we're, we're getting into you're still getting the pickup load in the box so like 20 20 bun like we yeah no no like 20 right. 20 bundles that's that's a good load on i was gonna truck. say would you even put that in the back well of the i have truck? a 2500 yeah. series truck yeah it, it's more like it's but my question would be so is it anything pretty much past the 500 uh kgs that is what you would pay for if someone well, came in with one the way what yeah the way we were or the way i was uh, uh we were suggesting to do it that someone comes in with a free with a free voucher yep. you weigh it in yep. if it goes over 550 that's, that's what they pay one. for they so you, yep. you yep. whatever the kilograms of that 0 0.09 times that and that's what they would pay for yeah where i took like i think six loads so far with just the different vouchers and uh just because from the each property gets mm -hmm. individual one just to clarify um i think all mine only came to 500 and that's for six loads right? yeah and so like there's it's a, it balances in between yeah. all the tickets i find yeah so i i think the the main reason is it's because we're getting contractors that, yes. are, that are, yes. are coming in yes. and and using that right yep. mm -hmm. and that's not what this free voucher was no, designed for right no I, no, well, I, I was happy to use it when I did half of my roof. Yeah, yeah. I know I'm doing it with the other half yeah. of my roof, and well, I want to know. Well, the thing, the thing being is, this is a, an annual free, free voucher. You're not doing your roof annually, right? No. So if you do your roof, it allows you to do part of your roof. You get compensated for the rest. Well, you're going to have to pay for it. Yeah. Like everything else, you know? mm -hmm. that's but, what it is. But I do see it being used more for what Brent just yeah, said. Yeah. Right? Oh, yeah. I've replaced my toilet, yeah. or mm -hmm. we're bu we bought a new mattress. Yeah. Um, like that's that's the kind of thing I would use it for. Something like a well, and I, I no, know no, because and all the, we've got a, we have a dumpster in our yard right now. So all I was getting at was I had done half of my roof, yeah. okay, and I know I had that in my pickup load. Right. So. I was under the dimensions, cubic meters of mm -hmm. material, but I know I'm going to be in excess of 500 kilograms. Mm -hmm. That's right. where I was yeah. getting at. Yes. So yeah, that, that's all the, the point because everybody else isn't going to go to that pro 550, mm -hmm. but I know it's just half of my roof. I was well in excess. It also avoids the dump trailers coming in as well, right? That are so kind of so that, that was the, yeah. that was the only, I, I know it's, it's a little bit. And that was, that was exactly right. Like uh, absolutely. Getting, like I, I the tandem for it, dump yeah. trailers coming in with lifts, right? Yeah, and then you know, and it did say on the on the voucher that it's uh, a half ton or equivalent, or or equivalent, equivalent yeah. to it. But you know, people were showing up with that, and yeah. some would let in, some wouldn't, and yeah. then and, and, so it's a gray area. So that's what we're trying to correct. I mean, that's what I was trying I, to figure I, out what the half ton yeah. shingles weight because if we knew what that was, mm -hmm. then you really couldn't go in excess of that. I, I would think that if you put yeah. 20 bundles on your, like not a, a, a 350 or, you know. 20, like, yeah, just a 2,500. Yeah. Oh, a did you just speak Ford to Tim Sission? <laughs> oh, Bill, okay. you know not what you've done. <laughs> you know not what you've done, sir. Oh, we, we crossed the line. Thank <laughs> you. I, used to, I always made a comment at work, but I came in and see black guys on the and I'd tell the guys, I guess a Ford knife dog. <laughs> just so, All just so fast. Yeah. Yeah. She right. piled up so quick and failed the wheel. Right. <laughs> so do we want to does council wish to change it or leave it at five fifty or where are we going? Five fifty. Five fifty is appropriate. Yeah, five fifty okay. kgs. Okay. Good. Yeah. Uh and if we want to go into anything else. 
else other than what is in front of you? I'm oh, like, uh, one thing I was going to say, I heard that there was some calcium done out. Yes. I'm very happy to hear. Yeah, and we've got some more. Uh, right now I'm waiting uh, for, I, it's, uh, I'm expecting some this week because I was talking to the guy and he said, no, just leave it and we'll do a cancellation order. So he said we should get another load this week. So right now we have uh, a 20,000 load out, a little more than 20,000, a 10,000, and then probably another 20,000 plus should do this. With the dry weather now that we've seen in the last week or so, it's nice to see the calcium yeah. coming for yeah. sure. And it need, there's spots you can see that it needs it. Yes, you know, so. yes. I heard Silver Lake was done yesterday, yeah. I guess. I, I was there on the weekend and I'm thinking it. Same time. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. No, no. Well, that's the good. weather so, has not been your uh, friend. No, but uh, hey, it's gone. And McGraw Road right now, uh, the A gravel schedules go on Monday. So as soon as that is on, put in place, packed, shaped up, uh, Greenwood will be in, like we'll line up Greenwood for the double surface. Okay. So that'll be put to bed. We're in the process of patching Whitkey and Western Drive. So the single will be going on that. That'll be put to bed too soon. And then whatever happens with our other uh, projects that are out there. So uh, I, I've seen the mowing, Bill. Uh, one thing that I've noticed for getting a lot of brush coming back in towards the sides of the road, is there anybody well, with, the, with the actual brush coming in? <clears throat> yeah. What we will do, like once the, the mowing is, uh, mm -hmm. we get one round, we're just doing one round, which is, it's supposed to be five feet, but by the yep. time you do it. So then after that's done, what we have been doing is we'll concentrate on each of our, uh, you know, different boards, do a full road in its entirety. And as long as we don't get the stuff, you know, too much more than two, three inches with uh, the brusher that we have the, the, on the mower, mm -hmm. we can pretty well trim it back. We have got into situations where we pulled the, the debut out and trimmed it, but it's funny, just as you had said that, uh, as the roads are brushed back more, the canopy does start to, it comes yeah. into the, the it, light. It know. never fails. It, everything wants to see yeah. the light. For but, sure. but if you do go and mow a road, road completely back, it makes it, it does a really nice It's a lot back. safer too, because right now, the, the <laughs> with the deer and stuff coming out, I even noticed this morning, and I'm heading out, uh, just before we seen the fox, there was a deer, and, and it is, it's, a, it's going to yeah. keep it back because it's a lot safer for everyone. So right now, what we're looking at doing is uh, it's on its way down to Dacre, hitting the roads and coming back. So then when it comes back here, then we'll be going up into uh, Ward 4 and then heading up towards the, the mountain. So uh, mm -hmm. Eganville, any issues that we've had here have been cleaned up. So that's it. Uh, have you talked about garbage at all? <laughs> Are you ready to give us an update? We're a little full at Sam Road there. A little full. <laughs> Isn't he quiet? Yeah, he's very quiet. Yeah, because he's abandoning us. Yeah. He's in Spain already. Yeah. 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 He's, he's like a church mouse. <laughs> church mouse back there. So uh, I was just out for uh, a drive with, uh, I guess, one of the contractors that is going to be giving us a uh, price. I'm guessing on that. Matthew Day. Matthew Day Moist. Okay, so we went around and we were looking at the waste sites. Currently, right now, what we're doing is uh, we have an, uh, or Brian has uh, reached an agreement with Ottawa Valley so we can take our uh, fiber and our coal mingle up to them. So mm -hmm. papers and cardboard and, uh, and mixed um, uh, recycling. So we can take that up to them right now. We have two dumpy bins at uh, McGraw Road Highway 41, Lake Clear, and uh, at the Ruby. So Dumpy is hauling those up. Our garbage, what we're doing, and anything that's picked up in town, it's business as usual, they're just taking it right up to the Ottawa Valley Waste Recovery Center. Okay, that's a uh, gar question. Yeah, garbage right now, our bins are full. So hopefully uh, uh, our Canadian Waste Management will resolve that, but we can get our bins full. But currently right now, we're using the compactor at Lake Clear, so V-Line has to dump it. It's full right now. Uh, we have a truck and a loader down at Highway 41 that we're putting in that. And then we're sending the garbage truck up to the Sand Road when it's uh, in use. And then we're sending it up to McGraw Road 
to, to do it. So we have all our bases covered, but we've got bends that are full. The Ruby Road, what we have been doing is taking the motor over, backing up the hill and, and dumping that out. That's not very pleasant. And uh, we actually, thank God we didn't have the sale. We pulled uh, two of our recycling bins, the, the big 40 cubic yard out of Spring Creek and the other, I think it's about a 30, 35 yard out of Spring Creek. It's up the sand road, but I feel that D line can go. So it's business as usual, but it's full. Oh. Well, and we're just. I think the thing through. that uh, I'm going to speak for all of us here. I think the thing that was most impressive to council was the speed at which you guys figured out some quick solutions that we could put out on social media, considering the timing of the Sunday afternoon closure to the Monday and Tuesday recycling and garbage. And I know that it created, it created a bit of a mess in 12 of the 17 municipalities. So I was really proud that at least you had a plan and our residents knew that if they couldn't stockpile their recycling for that week, that they could in fact go to one of our waste sites and dump their recycling. Yeah. You know, I think it probably kept a lot of recycling out of garbage bags. For sure. So for sure. I just, I want to, I think that we really owe you a thank you for your swift action in getting our residents the, some sort of response. It was a very confusing time. You know, the, the company closed down and then people saw the trucks on the road and they were like, well, those trucks are on the road. So what do you mean they closed down? So there was a, there was a lot of confusion in the air. Yeah, they, so, they were actually on the, the one last day they did do a haul for us. And uh, it uh, right after that, it was just yeah. shut down. But, you know, we're, we're very fortunate that we do have our own waste site. We're yes. Very, very fortunate for that. Uh, the recycling, it, it's working out. And I do believe, I, at least I hope, that uh, we will find a solution short term and then whether uh, we go to a, a full contract with other municipalities to go to tender on how we're going to move this and manage it. Uh, I was speaking with Sue McCray uh, from Ottawa Valley this morning, and uh, she was saying, you know, just keep her in the loop about what's going on because there's other people knocking on her door. Of if we're, if by any chance we're moving our stuff to Ottawa, she wants to, uh, you know, be aware of it and uh, not at the last moment because there's other people looking to, uh, to to take our spot. Yeah, and certainly I think this is, we're coming up with a short term solution, understanding that we're going to need to go to a request for proposals and tenders, that potentially doing that as a group of larger municipalities that we may be able to get better pricing. Um, right now we're doing, a, I'm doing a First thing tomorrow, I'm doing a cost benefit analysis between maintaining my rural recycling at the recovery center and moving it to Cascade uh, in Ottawa because the tipping fee is less than half. So I'm looking at the cost of transportation and mm -hmm. determining whether or not it's more cost effective to ship to cost Cascade. And if in fact it is, we'll likely continue our curbside at the recovery center because our own equipment's picking it up, but maybe we'll send our rural stuff to Cascade. Mm -hmm. um, but hopefully I'll have those answers tomorrow once I know for sure that uh, Canadian Waste was one of the few around that has a front loading piece of equipment that is available, uh, that they can actually provision the service in the time that we need. Uh, that's why Bill was meeting with them today. Mm -hmm. uh, and hopefully I would think by late August, all of the municipalities would be getting together to structure a long-term plan as to whether we want to get together and do tenders. Um, some municipalities, uh, you know, had Claire and Mirai, it may, may not want to be involved because Ottawa is a long ways for them. Yeah. Uh, but for some of us, maybe Ottawa is a realistic possibility for shipping and maybe there's a way of combining our materials together to make it more cost effective to move it. And certainly, Jen, we had a meeting so, yeah, so, recently that so, uh, is going to take time, but it may be it, a long-term plan down the road. And that's what I was just going to say. So way to toss that over to me. That's great. So Brian and I did, in fact, go to the presentation in McNabb Race slide. Um, this is a very interesting process. 
it there's a facility right now um, being commissioned in Halifax. Um, some very interesting, it's a very interesting solution. Um, the facility does need 200 ton per day to exist, which would mean that we would have to reach beyond our Renfrew County borders, obviously. Um, the facility itself would be built by the company, not with municipal dollars. Our investment would be our, our um, per load, you know, the $90, or I think they said 90 was in the ballpark. So the $90 per, per load. And um, I, I will leave this on my desk. We are waiting for some more information. Um, and I think that, um, I think Mayor Peckett's going to take the lead on this. Uh, with with Mayor Stack, and um, hopefully we can get a whole bunch of our municipalities on board to make this achievable. I, I think long term, this gets us out of the waste site business and so, potentially. So this is for garbage and recycling. Zero or waste. Zero? zero waste. Zero so waste. So now there's a caveat to that. Uh, waste Diversion Ontario is still saying that we have to have 50% diverted materials. The challenge with that is where are those diverted materials going? Because there's no commodity except for in metals. So it would be, I mean, I would think that we would burn cardboard and paper and that because there's no, there's no commodity for that. Um, but I, I, will, I will wait for more information on this. Yeah. It was a very quick presentation. There were a lot of questions. Um, the one question I asked was, could we mine our existing waste sites to add tonnage? And the answer was yes, as long as the Ministry of the Environment allowed it. Okay. Um, but there was a lot of interest. Cheryl Gallant was there, um, uh, quite a few of the elected and staff uh, from across Renfrew County were there. So that sort of gave me a, a really great feeling, especially it was pretty short notice to get all of us out there. It was only a couple of weeks. so. I thought it was amazing, but I will leave this here and it's got some information, but I will have more as we go along. So this facility that they have running in Halifax. It's just being commissioned right now. That's why they want, they've already told us they're not interested in another plant today. That's right. They want that plant fully operational, doing everything that the individual proven technologies have done collectively in one place so that they've got something to showcase and that they're confident before they make additional investment, yeah. uh, but they are certainly interested in additional investment potentially in our area uh, down the road. Uh, we're probably a year before that consideration would come. And I think they said about three years. Uh, they, before, two to three, they, yeah. Two to three years before they could be they, operational. They wanna have something proven obviously before they go crazy and start promising us the world. Um, my, one of my favorite stats was about greenhouse gases. Um, a unit like this, the one in Chester, Nova Scotia, is the equivalent of 42,000 cars off the road, which is, it's pretty, that's pretty substantial. So I will, I will bring more information as I have it. That's all I know for now. Um, they did show us a bit of the facility through slides, um, but since it's not up and running, it was difficult to, to give us everything that they wanted to give us at this point, but stay tuned. But again, what you guys did was you made it not seamless. Obviously, there were some hiccups because it was the a Sunday afternoon, but you did make it very easy on our residents, and that's the most important thing, right? In in the in the wake of the, that confusion. So way to go, guys. It's not over yet, though. I know it's not over yet, but I have full confidence <laughs> that. <laughs> yeah, me too. Alrighty then. On the downhill slide. <laughs> yeah. Forever leave on a positive note. Yes. Yeah. That means I'm out of here. Unless you have anything else for us. Quick question. Yes, sir. You had the speed monitor on Montreal Road. Did you get a complaint? One speeder. You know, no, no. It was, you know what? Oh, well, I, I got a call. Oh, geez. Yeah, that's good. I'm going to reduce the, reduce the 50 kilometers from the left. Yeah. No, 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 no. No. The, the reason, you know, we're just putting in places that it has not been. So we're just, just trying it out and seeing. There was only one speeder on the whole road. So they, they've got no problems. There. No problem. There. No. I mean, let's face reality. If you're going 80 kilometers an hour past the trailer park there, you'd better have four brakes yeah. on your, on your, and your, 
parachute drawn to get stopped for the lake. I had a person stop in and was uh, concerned about the park shooting and with speeders again. So <laughs> if, you, if you get to yeah. time, even into the 80 zone, it's yeah. Um, I had a call about the 80 zone and fourth shoot. So yeah. if, if we can get it there somewhere between yeah. me and the corner. Yeah. I'm, just, I'm just guessing, but I would guess most of them would be around the 50 kilometer area going by there. Or do you have a record? Yeah. Well, you, you want it in the 80, though. Yeah. Yes. In the 80. So they're thinking, I think the 50 is a lot worse. The oh. 50 is awful. I mean, you can't. And hence, so right now, I'm going to probably cut some back, but I can't see yeah. until I'm out to the yellow line with the big truck coming yeah, up yeah. the driveway. And they're flying. Yeah, they're I would flying think that's something they, they turn down, about, they, they turn down Melanie, So maybe some enforcement, right but what can you do, right? What, I mean, it's. I believe that. Yeah, because the, the 50 is... The 50 is bad, and the, the, I'm even getting complaints on the 80 now. Well, so I, can, I, I, I can see from my house, and then Tim's out of my like stretch, I can't see, on. but... Um, all I was going to say, just before Bill leaves, are we discussing the Cambian P Boardwalk peer review before he leaves, since he's involved, or are we just voting I on it today? I don't think he needs to... Fill me in on what's going down. If he's, whatever. Yeah. Uh, Sounds good. Okay. The guy's got work to do, Brad. Yeah. Just making sure. I spent the whole afternoon driving around. <laughs> and again, I, think, people I think that was a worthwhile exercise yeah. if it's well, going to give were, us a solution. Were, yeah, they were very uh, happy. And like I had said to them, I said, you, you realize that this is a temporary you know, solution and we'll be going to tender after. And they said, yeah, that's fine because it gives them, even by doing it temporarily, it gives them so an advantage. Talking. They know Absolutely. where the routes are. They're right in Eganville yeah. here and yeah. now. It was uh, no, it was actually a very good, very good meeting. Okay. We just carried on without you. We knew you'd be back eventually. Yeah, I had a couple taxes. Where are you? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, thank you. I don't think there's anything else that. Uh, no. Thanks, Bill. All right, guys. Thanks, Thanks, Bill. Bill. You want a break? Yes, please. We'll have a break. Break for you.
This session brought to you by. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. I'm the shoe lounge. Oh, well, uh, Higginville right. District Seniors. Oh, hey, Higginville right. District Seniors. Yeah, Higginville and District yeah. Seniors. I also have the Algonquins of Pipwalkinagon, which I got at the wedding cutting at the bridge on Friday. Yeah, you and if everybody Pepsi notices, like I'm drinking clear liquids today. <laughs> yeah, I wondered where your Pepsi was. I don't know, but I've seen Sandra with some <laughs> earlier there. I'm trying to cut down. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, see, I quit drinking, quit smoking. Now. Everybody ready to go now? No. One more. Now. I'm going to be one crappy okay. counselor here, probably. So. Okay, Brian. <laughs> I've only got a couple of items uh, for you. Uh, one of them uh, was the request with respect to uh, an additional administrative support individual. Uh, we're looking at uh, moving our building department into uh, an electronic record format uh, to help better manage those records that's integrated with our accounting software. We're just working with the software provider to ensure that he, in fact, could use it for both us and North Algona because, of course, North Algona is also the same software. Uh, but I think that that is a necessity. It'll take, according to Doug, about a year uh, to get all the records from uh, the old septics from Ministry of Health and everything else and get that all transferred into our system. And then I think that with some of the changes going on in here, so the extra body is probably going to be essential. So my suggestion was going to be, depending on where we go uh, with CAO recruitment, uh, which of course we will be going into closed session later on today about, um, I would like it if we could table this item until we have a better understanding of our move forward. Um, you know, obviously Brian leaving this a game changer in the office and how are we going to structure? Um, so if it's okay with the uh, committee, I would like I would like to put this off until our August meeting. This report actually was written before I knew that I was. Going I to. I recognize that. Yes, <laughs> yes. I think I read it before you knew that you were leaving. So yeah. no, that's uh, that's absolutely. I think uh, the the fiscally responsible way to go. And I think that you know, knowing that that we will be going into a, a bit of a transition time, um, I I prefer to hold off for just now. Uh, the other thing that I presented uh, is a report with respect to capital reinvestment reserve, which we spoke about during the budget. I continue to maintain that this is uh, absolutely essential to the health of this community over the long term, and that it should be given consideration prior to getting into our next budget. And I didn't want this to get lost in the transition. I think it's really important that we plan today to start putting that 1% annually towards capital reinvestment. So I thought this was something that we'd already agreed to. We just hadn't passed the policy. We have not adopted any policy. Okay. That's why I keep bringing it back. Okay. Sorry. I thought that we had agreed to it and we were waiting for the resolution. My my bad. I'll bring forward a resolution if that's the desire of this council. I think we have to bring it forward. It only makes good sense. Well, and one of the things that we asked was Brian at one time had it at 2%. We asked for it to be at 1%, and that's what he's brought back to us. So that's what we asked for. So that's where there's, we should go. Yeah, there's any directly for infrastructure. So it's, yeah. not, it's not going to waste. You well, know? Mm. And you that's know, this is, this, I, don't, I don't know how you guys feel about this. I know that it was a really hot button issue. But the whole idea of uh, local share uh, increasing the HST 1% and that 1% would actually stay in your municipality specifically for infrastructure, I thought was a good plan because HST is ability to pay. It isn't like property taxes. It isn't like any other tax. Um, if I choose to buy a $500 pair of shoes, I will be paying 14% instead of 13%. The HST has never been risen and I kind of thought that it was a, it was an ingenious idea um, that came out of AMO uh, for our infrastructure deficit. Uh, it just never, obviously going into an, an election, it never grew legs. So I completely agree with you that, that this is a very important policy for us to have in place. I don't like the HST. <laughs> I know, you, but you it's get, fine. you get where, I, I, you understand, I understand what I'm saying. Going. Yeah. Yes, is that yes. it's it, it in since its inception since its amalgamation of the PST and the GST mm -hmm. it has never been risen in fact it's gone down 
it went down a percent. And so when AMO put together this report that said, in your community, this is what your infrastructure bank would look like, it was very, it, it just seemed like a very interesting way um, for our infrastructure uh, deficit, which I believe is about 33 million across Eastern Ontario, if I'm not mistaken. Um, you know, it's, it's just, it's a drop in the bucket, but it was something. And I don't like, nobody likes any taxes, Tim. <laughs> I don't like HSD. I nobody like does. does. <laughs> well, I was liking it when it was going on its way down and not trying to increase it, but anyway. But this was a specific tool. Mm -hmm. Like that 1% would have been, would have gone right back to the municipalities. That was the plan in place. I would have rather seen it taken out of the actual HST to divert the 1% rather than well, to that would have been extra <laughs> on top that of would someone have, else. That would have been That's lovely. my way of thinking. So. They, because of the election, no, yeah. no party was going to take it on. Nope. Okay. okay. So we're going and to, that's it. That's it. Yeah, I mean, our, our financials look good for this month. Okay. Uh, we continue to have a, a, a positive cash flow. Things are in good shape uh, from a financial perspective. We're on track uh, through the first six months of the year. Um, the biggest news, of course, uh, was my uh, notice to all of you last Friday. Uh, that big were you not golfing when you sent that out? Yeah. I, I he was on his way. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I was actually running from signing my contract to getting the notice out before the press release and trying to get it into your hands before I actually got to the golf tournament. So it, there was a lot of scrambling. So my last day with the town will be the township will be on the 9th of August. Mm -hmm. uh, I joined the town of our prayer on August the 12th. That said, um, Walter, I believe, uh, spoke to Jen at length and identified that, you know, I, I would be available to assist in transition in any way that the township felt they wished to have me involved. Uh, I'm here. Uh, I, this is my community. I've been here for 18 years. Uh, I appreciate everything that this council and the councils before you have done uh, over the years and the, and the progress we've made as a community. I think we've got uh, some very good staff here. Um, we're not completely uh, uh, scrambling because we do have some very experienced people. Uh, I think we've given some of the right tools to the staff that exist uh, to ensure that we move forward and that the community doesn't take side steps. There will be new ways of doing things, I'm sure, but that's not always a bad thing. Uh, and I'm looking forward to the new challenges and working with uh, the community and the council in our prayer, as well as uh, the staff members down there at uh, moving their agenda forward for the town of Armbar. And there's no cap on the transition time where we can yeah. tell you? Hey, we'll just put okay. a cap on oh, <laughs> yeah, You know, four or five years, whatever. Yeah, no. You know, no, okay. Anyway, so I have nothing else. Excellent. Thanks, Brian. Yeah. And apparently we don't have to have a party for him because he's going to throw yeah. his own party at he's his own. He's having a party. So. He's so. having a meat yeah. party. Budget cuts. Yeah. Budget cuts. There you go. Yeah. Okay. Um, correspondence. I like the idea of the hydro ombudsman. Maybe that was helpful for all. The food bank or the clothing bank. Yeah. Is that something that we've ever done before? I, I think they identify themselves as a non-profit organization. Yeah. Um, the reality is we have a number of non-profit organizations. So council's question is if, if one. whether if you, if you give to them, yeah. do you give to others? Where do you draw the line? So okay. uh, I leave that ask in council's hands uh, as to whether or not you wish to proceed with giving that opportunity to them. I, I realize they receive large amounts of donations. People don't always go through the stuff that's being donated. That's they just kind of become a dumping ground, I'm sure, at times for mm -hmm. some stuff. I understand where that's coming from, but I also understand there's a cost of processing that material on our behalf. And they're a little different than other groups, but do the other groups also want the same then later? So I guess my question is, um, is this a one-time ask 
so that they can do a cleanup of their facility or would this be a continuing ask? I, I, it it sounds like can, can, can I, yeah, can, yeah, because you know what happens? People drop, like Brian says, garbage bags. I know. Full of stuff and there might be maybe one or two articles of clothing that can be used and some, not, not all, like I'm saying, but I could see how it could happen if there was a bunch of worn out stuff that they couldn't sell now that they've got to take the money that they're trying to use and and take it to the dump is there uh, is there somewhere in the facade uh, funding that they could apply for for extra like signage that enhances their building that would help them out as well oh absolutely they can apply for yes. so like my yeah. recommendation would be for them to look at the facade funding and see if there's somewhere in there that they can prove their building that helps them out as well but I wouldn't. It's move. funny when they first moved there. I also thought that they might utilize those windows as sort of, you know, storefront, you know, like um, like dressed little mannequins or put outfits in the in the windows so that people would know that the that it's the clothing bank. I'm just wondering if we could compromise on this and give them some free stickers to maybe get rid of some of their garbage over well yeah that we could that would allow them to get rid of some of that the the garbage yeah um because i don't think that this is a i don't i don't think that it's necessarily a month over month problem maybe right now they're just overrun but i can't see other organizations here having things to throw out like the clothing bank would. The food bank perhaps uh, if things go bad. What's well, consistent like for example like if I have a dumpster at a property renovating or whatnot you get all sorts of stuff in oh. it or construction or like that's what I'm saying is like I just don't want to set them up for that they're going to get more like they're going to get more garbage than what they're getting now. It's kind of one of those things if we do give any more like we do have the dump pass we do provide and stuff but the thing is there's no reason for them to contact people in the community that are in that industry and hey we have a large we need to get rid of i'm sure but there's like, companies uh, that would help them out as well i i've even heard like you know those diabetes uh, proceeds or but the donation boxes yeah are, yeah yeah are, and people will just fill them up full of garbage you know and, and exactly what you're saying at mm -hmm. so now we have a little organization that's trying to raise money and now they're dumpsters and know. and i mean i think that we all saw it after the john street fires i mean when you came in here the kitchen was filled um and there were only so many things that could be utilized and the rest of it went to the clothing bank god love them for taking it so I, i'm just i'm just trying to come up with a, a yeah. one a one time offer for them to do a bit of a cleanup because is are the garbage stickers is that hindering them having a facility that's easy to to shop in for lack of a better term to to go around and and look for you know a suit for your young lad or a or party dress well, by the tone of the letter i think they just want to get rid of stuff that isn't recyclable isn't usable and junk so anyway, my my suggestion would be a one time, maybe give them 10 stickers yeah. or what, maybe one dump card. I, I don't know, but well, I'll leave it up to you guys to discuss. I just, when I read it, I, I sort of had this formulated in my brain that we certainly, I agree with everybody saying we do have other mm. people uh, in this and, and there are a lot of people that would like this, but if it will help them do a one-time cleanup, I I think that it would be it would be good of us to do it. Right. According to this, they must they had a conversation with you, Brian. Brian. Brian, did Sorry. they have a conversation with you about this correspondence? The way it reads. No. Okay. In regard to our recent conversation concerning garbage bags, they didn't talk to you. Okay. okay. All right. I'm assuming based on what they're looking for, I, I'm assuming they're looking for us to do this on a continual ongoing basis so they don't have to worry about putting that bag of garbage clothing out at the curb and having to put a sticker on it. Okay, so, well, so I, the only alternative I can think of just for this specific company, I would only want to do it at one time would be if they want to utilize their uh, 
their dump pass if they have one and use that for the curbside and they just provide that to the township we can let the waste guys know hey there might be a little pile of garbage bags at this That's, time yeah besides that i think there's there's multiple garbage companies in the area i'm sure that would assist them as well so what do we think guys well, I think we have to do something. Either give them some stickers, as you say, or maybe as Brent said, give them a couple of free, dump, free passes. Yeah, I think. They, but then again, we can't. So that, that's not going out there. We can't. No. no. We can't take it for snow drifters. No, I don't no. care. No, it'd be on garbage so, day, and it's all seniors that like that work there. Because I know a couple of the people, and mm -hmm. and, uh, and that's what I was thinking. Like, if instead of them sending it to snow drifters, that we just have it. We can exchange their dump pass for the year into like garbage day on Thursday. Yeah. So, so what would you? Put, so, what if we do? What? Would, how many garbage bags would you put on the back of a half ton? I was just going to ask that very you question. Know, can you fit 20, 20, bags. 20 bags in the back of a half ton? Give them twenty stickers. So that's a dump cart. That's a dump cart. That's a dump cart. So, okay, are we in agreement? Yeah. Okay. So, can we give administrative direction for you to? Respond to the clothing bank um, from from council and the staff, and say, you know, we would like to give you twenty stickers so that you can do a cleanup of the facility. But unfortunately, at this time, we can't really make this a continuing effort. No, we don't. I mean, we don't want to contribute to, like Brent said, with the you know, and people using it as a dumpster. I end, know, because you know, that's the problem. But I, don't I, want to get I think that. Uh, like a facade for them to look at the funding as well. That's a really good idea. So, if you're speaking to one of the volunteers, Brent, maybe you should give them a nudge. Well, I'll about, talk to Dana's mom. Oh, Perfect. there you go. Talk to Dana. Well, Dana's mom should know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, anything else in correspondence? Uh, well, we dealt with the speeding on Foran. Yeah. Uh, what about the sign permission for the? So I was, I was looking at that. I took a drive, went up. I'm not sure the exact spot, but what I was thinking that they should get in contact with the Bonisher Cave sign, and possibly that would be the best spot and where the school lot is. Yes. There's this already a sign built up. I just think that they pay into the municipality for that. I think Chris does. No, no I think that's an MTO sure. sign. Mm -hmm. It's, I don't know, it doesn't look like MTO sign because that's like Kavanaugh's on there. Oh, and that so, sign. The one over by the oh, school the lot on the, on the corner. That would be the only one that logistically is where the only other businesses are. Yeah, that's. She can get in contact with them. Actually, that's a really good idea. Just keeps it simple. Less signs is better. And it's just, there's spots there already. There's probably, probably had two more businesses on the bottom. I looked at it on the way here. So I, to me, that's the only one is Legion field. You don't, there's no commercial there all anyways. I know. The only other ones is Eganville population sign, uh, escape room, and then the fire department. Curling club. And curling and club, yeah. Yes. So I think keep it consistent. That's where it's some business signages so we can keep it there. Well, this is the same as the garbage stickers. It's a slippery slope because then, you know, I, I don't want to start throwing business names around, but is every business in town going to want to be there uh, because it is busy with the splash pad and the curling club and the farmer's market. And so I like your idea. Can we, can you, if this is uh, directed at you anyway, do you mind contacting this business owner? Sandy, I, I, I assume that the reason they wanted to be, as we said, at the splash pad was because the ice cream of is course. right there. Of course. That's to them the ideal location. So, I mean, unless council wanted to develop some form of policy down the road that would allow for those types of things to occur at certain fees, uh, because there may be future interest in advertising at that field uh, as it gets busier. And maybe there is, but this is not the time yet, I don't think. It's not. And I think that if we are going to do that, if we're going to develop a, pro a policy like that, you have to send it out to your businesses in advance and say, this is what we're thinking about what, you know, would you like to be a part of this? I, it is something we can look at is how, if you guys were advertised at Legion Field, where would you want your advertising? You want to advertise a uh, baseball diamonds or the community center, uh, the splash pad, the tennis court, or the actual entry into Legion Field is like, it's the structure is there. It's just a signage on it. That's yeah. the only, I think this would might lead us into having more money for the recreation department. 
Um, but we sh we can look at that. But I think it well. needs to be a policy that we put together yeah. in yeah. advance, not that we're reacting to. Mm -hmm. well, one, one not piece be what like this. And that, yeah. that's the other thing. I mean, if we're going to do it, the beautiful thing about the sign that you're talking about, Brent, is that when Chris Hinsberger envisioned it, he went out and he got those businesses to sign on, mm -hmm. no pun intended. And that's why it looks so cohesive. And it's 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 actually quite a really beautiful sign is because he didn't do it piecemeal. He did it all at once uh, with those businesses already signed on. So, all right, good. Thank you. Lauren, we're done? Yeah, we've looked on the speeding. I thought, Tim, you'd like doing research. I thought maybe you'd like to do some research on the city of St. Catherine. <laughs> <laughs> I've already did that. No, no, not on the city of St. Catherine. Yeah. Could you do a presentation? I you. There was a lot of concerns. <laughs> You've done check the demographics. Oh, I'll tell you that. Need study. There, there was Want some crabby need individuals study. when I talked. About <laughs> <laughs> Want to need study. I, I, when I, when I read it, I thought I had read it incorrectly. And then I read it again, and then Merv and I were at the golf tournament. <laughs> of course, so I'm the one that gets to do this because yeah. you know what? I don't mind doing it. Right. <laughs> but go. I think when I read it, I think it was a dare. Oh, okay. Yes. I think it was a dare. I dare you to. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it was actually brought up in Parliament once. once. <laughs> Are you serious? Yeah. 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 No, it was. It was. It was talked about uh, in. in uh, that's why I'm not laughing. <laughs> well, you're going to do the study. Then. I've yeah. already invested time in right. the study. So, all right. There, there you go. go. All right. Anything else for correspondence, guys? I realize the farm safety thing is big enough. I don't think our farming community is big enough to. No, no I don't think we have a problem here. Yeah. Okay, on to new and unfinished business. County of Renfrew update. Uh, so at this time, I'll just tell you that we did have another meeting um, with our health and social services uh, modernization uh, ad hoc committee. Um, we are moving forward with some ideas. Uh, it's it, it's going to be a long road. And, you know, we heard Amy Schulten talk today about that March 2020 deadline. It's a little worrisome that they that things might not have long enough consultation and enough consultation to make those dates work. Um, but just know that we are working at it. Uh, and the other um, uh, piece of news that came out last Thursday is that the federal government has approved the Eastern Ontario Regional Network uh, cell project across Eastern Ontario. Uh, this project is $213 million. It's 71 million from the feds. 71 million from the province, about 61 million from the telcos, and a million from uh, the, I'm sorry, 10 million from the uh, participating counties and separated cities. So we take this as very good news. Um, I know that there's been a lot of controversy over 5G. Uh, I can say that at this time we are not there. Uh, we, in some places, we don't even have 3G. So it's, uh, it would be very difficult to get all the way to 5G. Uh, but at this time, uh, and I've said this before and I'll say it again, it is absolutely unacceptable that you can't call 911 from your vehicle wherever you are in the province of Ontario. And those gaps, I'm not saying that everybody's going to be able to live stream from their phone and maybe not watching Netflix or FaceTime but you should be able to make a simple phone call. And so our dead zones, uh, they need to be fixed. So I heard on your something like 300 cell sites are put in, is that right? That is correct, sir. Yeah. I think it's 278. Mm -hmm. Now, I, I usually don't bring something to the table that I'm not 100% certain on, but going back to the 911 deal, um, yeah, correct me if I'm wrong, and you or Dave would be able to fill me in because you said somebody tried calling 911 from outside your place and there was yeah. no service but now on a lot of the modern phones it says emergency calls only when you have zero service and it, it'll for 911 it's supposed to be able to go off of yes ostensibly it should satellite but right? do you realize that when you're driving down 41 
So between Griffith and say Cloyne. Yeah, I do know the area quite well. Don't bother trying to phone nine one one. Nothing. Okay, so so I didn't know that yeah. if there were no, that it's, spot look, for, it's, for that itself because uh, uh, they were told even in the park they should be able to use their cell phones because they had to do uh, emergency course for the forestry took place this spring and, and they said their cell phones should work where that even though it does no service. It should be able to work with 911 calls. So I, I don't know if you know any better than that or if they're giving false information. I can just tell you that in order to call 911 mm -hmm. when you're near Denby, you have to go to the Denby liquor store. Um, oh, uh, yeah, I, I, I know. I truck yeah. there every day, basically. Yeah. So I know where all the dead zones are and I do have a booster, but I never call 911 from those locations. I right. just call regular, you yeah. know. So I. I I, I was in a 911 experience uh, about a month ago, and I was thinking about the, and how it was brought up was uh, I was scared to go beyond because I knew the limits yeah. of, of, of where the dead zones were. But then after I was talking to a gentleman who said I was just at a meeting for our emergency preparedness, whatever it was for, for in the bush up in Algonquin Park, and they said your phone should work no matter what if it's a 911 emergency call. So I, that, that's yeah, just clear. I don't I know, know if there's any way. So that, it used to be before the new tower was put up in Mattawachan near Griffith, people would, if there was an accident or something went sideways on them, they would drive to the Griffith store and phone 911. Mm -hmm. And it would mean that sometimes the Greater Mattawaska Fire Department and the Renfrew County ambulances were being dispatched, but they were going in yeah. to Lennox and Addington. Yes, because right at the top of the hill, that's in the Grand County line. Right. So I know that 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 was a it was a big deal because if you're a, a, say a tourist and you're just trying to get to the nearest phone, you're not necessarily going to say what county am I in or what that's municipality right. am I in. Yeah. So I don't know what parts of Algonquin Park. I mean, it's a big park you're talking about, no service. But they had a tower up there in Whitney one up long before we had cell service here because of the tourists in the park. I could sit I could sit at our hunt camp at Lake St. Peter, which is about a mile south of the park, and call home, and I couldn't call home from Killaloo. Yeah. Well, in the very first major project that Bell Mobility did in 1991, I believe, was they did the 400 corridor to hunt to Muskogus and to Huntsville. Yeah. Right. So um uh Gra uh, Grandview and uh, what's the other resort there on, on uh, Perry Lake? Um, anyway, the two resorts, they had cell phone service in 1991. Some parts of Toronto didn't. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Anyway, that's oh. my report for Renfrew County. I will have more at our next meeting. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, number two, the pastor that he looked good at. Uh, number three is off, you said. Yeah. Energy, I, I don't have anything for you. Yeah. Energy management plan update, number four. LAS. Um, you have a copy of the okay. uh, update to the energy management plan that was prepared by King Human Environmental. Uh, that plan was required under Ontario regulation by July the 1st. Uh, so I just wanted to bring it forward. Uh, we will need a resolution. To adopt the, plan. Plan, the updated plan, and other than that, yes, another plan that's sitting on a shelf somewhere. <laughs> we, we do use it anytime we do. No, we do, but it's legislated to go to the province. <laughs> I'm just saying. Yeah, have, have you any idea yet with all the upgrades you did at the arena if you save much energy over the? Yeah, I mean, uh, we're we're actually want to do some investigation. We've had. So we, we've seen some significant drop and then we're starting to see some creep in some of our buildings. So we're not sure if there's some issues with hydro or where the issue is. So I think we're going to look at some follow up on some of the stuff, but certainly the arena, just the drop from the LED lighting, a very substantial drop in our costs. Uh, and then the plant itself by replacing that floor, we've seen, we've seen a decrease in our overall energy consumption at the rink. But uh, as I said, we some of our facilities we saw a drop and then they're starting to creep so we're trying to figure out what's well, I'm just, just wondering about the arena with the new floor and the new compressor equipment yeah uh and i mean hydro of course has made some assumptions because they don't read their meter every month um so they do some averaging we actually spent about 
six months of this year, five months of this year on credits from last year with FIBRO. So that kind of makes call uh, makes it difficult to estimate. Yeah, it complicates the uh, where are we truly because they're just not reading the meters frequently enough. Yeah. I find that at home even. <laughs> Any other questions for the plan? No. <clears throat> Item number five, uh, River Room from Bob Howe, River Ridge Room letter. When did you send that, Ryan? It's, we got it yesterday, today, I think. Uh, last week already. Yeah. Right last I, oh, there we go. It was Thursday. Yeah. I just didn't download it. Mm. I read it now. I can't find it. Okay. So Brian says that we do not have to go into closed for this. Uh, um, it, I mean, it, it could be potential litigation, but if, if you're giving us that advice, we can discuss this in open. This, okay. This was done quite a few number of years ago. This was done way back when I was, if I recall correctly, when I was on council. It was done in 2012, I believe. 2012 or maybe 2011. Is it that long back? Yeah. But anyways, when there was when we were. Let's see. Meters went in in 2011. Yeah, I think, and the thing. I thought the meters went in in 2010. No. I thought we turned them on in 2011. Yes. Yeah. We started billing them. I think this was 2012. I think. Uh, we can look back in the middle. Well, it, anyway, it's, yeah. the, it says it's five years in the, in the letter. Oh, yeah. No, it's longer than that. It says it's five years in the letter. That's what I yeah. mean. So. <clears throat> oh, yeah. That's that's incorrect. Yeah. Yeah. Well, if I recall correctly, back when we did it, this was because of the meters and because of this, this was sort of a, a, a short-term thing that Council of the Day gave them at that time. It's not... And I understand that, but uh, sober second thoughts, we don't have anything in writing. And I think what Bob Howe is suggesting here is that when those units are sold, that's the time to divide them up. Because right now, like when you look at that, when you actually look at like the, the block on it, it's just like it's, the, it's not in for individuals. Like it's not like a semi-detached, it's separated. We're, yeah. we're right now it's a four unit so that's the thing like the municipality i guess if you're billing as a four unit you would have probably just want to put in like one one meter like if you would have yeah, if you did it if you did it again but how could you if there's four different individuals because they aren't they aren't set like they're inside same as my same as like the six unit on the street there's it's it's like the one line that's coming like I well mean, actually there's think, two lines i, I, I need to correct myself i think you're right sandra i think it was 2013 I think that building is just a, might be five or six years old. That's now I'm thinking about it. I'm getting six from the audience. So six years ago. There you go. Yes. Okay. So, so that would have been 2013. Well, what I believe happened at the time of the construction of that, the discussion was around uh, whether they put in one meter and one, like one or two water tanks and share everything. Uh, or whether those units be built as potentially separate units. I think the discussion with Gerald was at some point, maybe something happens to yourself and, or maybe you just decide, you know, you've had enough. You can sell them as four individual units, but if you plumb them today as one unit, you'll never be able to separate that. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So plumb them as four separate units and council of the day said put in your four meters but we're only going to bill you for one we'll charge you the multi-unit rates and when you sell the units then you can sell them independently or you can sell them as one but at that time you've got four meters already installed you've already got four hot water tanks you've already got everything separated so they are 
independent units that can be subdivided under the Planning Act by simply coming to council and requesting that those be subdivided under part lot control. And I believe that's where the original decision originated was he had planned to do one line of two inch, one inch, whatever he needed. And he was simply putting in plumbing for all four units and council, the discussion then went to, but if you plan to sell it, if you wanna sell it as four units, which might be harder than as four separate units. And that's why those meters went in originally to my recollection six years ago. So it's basically set up as four separate units. Well, yeah, so they can be sold far easier than... Well, four different people live there right now. Right? Well, it's the same as a multi-residential. Like on that street there, you have five, like five, six units. Theoretically, you could subdivide each apartment because they're all individually serviced, like hydro, all that. And then you can split into condos if you really want to after. Like anything, all I'm saying is that until something is actually like subdivided, I would just keep it as is the multi-residential. Same as say like one of the six units on that apartment, say if it flips into a condo after, well, you would separate it then. These you would see, you could sell them individually after. Well, and I think that's what River Run's lawyer is saying is that you can't, you don't change the rules in the middle of the game. We don't have anything in writing. We sent Brian back to check if there was anything in writing, there was not. And so it does seem like we've reneged on a on an agreement uh, with this particular um, on this particular floor fourplex. And when those units are sold, they will be sold as separate units with separate meters. Well, they have they're separate units with separate meters right now. And the only the only issue I have if if that was the case, then why is this one of a few? That when we come to do the water meter, we have to hand pick it out and do a hand mod and do modifications by hand. Oh, that, but it's not the only one. No, it's not the only one, but it's the one we're we're not. Okay. Yeah, there's only so like. What I'm about quite, the house on Alice? I thought that was a one-off as well. No, she's, if Sandra's doing her, her stuff and she's, this is the only one that she has to hold and do actual physical changes to because it's not run as per the system, but. But if there's a, I, I think any, all of us would be in agreement if there's something in the start and that's where moving forward, if something like this ever comes in, I would say let's have it in writing as like that you will split it. But right now we're going off of I don't think that we should break an oral what's been going on the last, what, seven years or six years? But we don't even have anything in writing when we go to sell it. How do you do it if you go to sell it? Well, I think that's certainly something that we can put in place, but that's, I think that's what he's saying. Unless and until a particular unit is sold, it's right here in the letter. Then it wouldn't, it wouldn't qualify for multi-unit if it was a, let's use Brent's term, a condo or a townhouse. Well, if you actually subdivide it at the county level, right? yeah, that goes yeah, through yeah, yeah. Bruce and then they fully subdivide That's it, right. right? Same as any, you can technically right. subdivide any house, any place in town. That's right. Theoretically. But there really is only one building in our municipality getting special treatment like this or was allowed to do that. They were the only ones that came to council at that time. And we had just turned the water meters on and there were... There were quite a few complaints about the water rates and everything else. And this was something that they took the time to come. Uh, both partners were here in front of us and explaining their rationale. And the council of the day said, yes, we will. this is something we will do. This is no different than somebody coming to council with a good business plan and us saying, no, that makes sense, right? We're, we're now giving the clothing bank 20 garbage stickers because it's a it's a request that's come here and if it makes sense then that's right yeah that's and at that time it made sense and but that that's a one time thing this is here is like you're you're giving it indefinitely this is I mean, i'm I sure the council today did not agree to give this as an indefinite that neighborhood thing. in general Garfield since they started to develop in that area has resulted in an increase of 140 residents in our community and $13 million in investment. Yeah, thank you for those facts and figures. That's fantastic, Brian. 
and then oh, but also for like say like a like a four unit triplex or whatever like the i'm just saying if you build something as like a four unit and say someone were to do it again it's actually technically cheaper for the meter buying the meter side than buying one that splits into four like i'm just like how the water lines work oh okay it's just like how it's run technically is actually cheaper because we have to buy the units like the physical meter units right it's just cheaper to have the smaller ones just it's just a side note that's all okay well we have to make a decision yeah. on this it's i mean we got a letter from a lawyer yeah. so they mean it Go ahead and with your decision, just leave it as is or what? For now, yes, until they sell those units. And I would say keep it as is until it's subdivided at the count at the county. That's why I would say when it becomes four individual units is when like it's four it individual meters. Well, my, there, there is four meters. Four meters there. There. The meters are already there. The meters are being read. What we're doing is we're taking, Sandra's taking the meeting, the meter readings and then doing her little formula to reduce the bill that's what she's doing well until like and that's my opinion is if until it's for individual units then i would say keep it as is but when that does change i would i would you go back to what a basic one unit is because that's what it has now become there's no other there's no other example in the municipality and i don't know it, it was the first fourplex that we built in our community how did, how did the rest of the four plexes pay? Well, there's they, they were all done under um, uh, part lock control, so they were as the, when they were built, they were subdivided at the time of construction. So they pay individual. Yeah. So this is the only one that's not paying for each one with special treatment, and that's where it's the only one that's actually blocked. It's the, it's the only it's yeah. the only one that's still a block lot that hasn't been subdivided. All the rest have been subdivided. You know, the other thing is, I think, uh, but, that, but actually, I think that there was one in there. Yeah. Yeah, I'd be curious. But the other thing is, I mean, Bob put this very succinctly that, you know, the people that are affected will be the people that live there, not River Run. Mm -hmm. Like, it, it's, it's on these people on a fixed income that are living in a rental unit that are going to be affected, not the corporation. That's, uh, and that's, not, uh, uh, really, on the other end of that, there's a lot of fixed incomes in Bonshire Valley that aren't getting subsidized by that. But, you know, I, 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 I don't know. I'm trying to put a sober talk to it. That's all. That's it. That's all. Okay. Well, I think that, you know what? We don't have anything in writing. And so if they want, they can, they, they can start litigation. This, I think this was a nice, as the reason Brian said we don't have to go into close was that this was a nice first letter stating the facts, but if they choose to, they can take this further. And what they're standing on is because we give them special treatment, they continue to get special treatment. Because there's nothing in writing. Well, that's what I mean. We, Council of the day, anyways. But can we not well, use our policy? I know the council of the day was it was not it was not an end, an never ending uh, policy. Staff was, would treat that as a multi unit, a multi residential unit, and then we would charge multi residential rates to that unit, and that was the direction we were given at the time. Because it was the first one of its kind. But I think well, the assumption was it wasn't going to go on forever, but that was a bad assumption. Yeah. Council also discussed uh, that when it would be sold, that it would because he was going to plummet for four, that it would then, when it was being sold under part lock control, that in fact it would be charged to each unit at that time, and that was the discussion. Because it is a multi-residential, well, right? I don't, I don't, it was the first one up in there. Yeah, yeah. I want very familiar with it, Brian. It was also discussed at the time, I believe, on council that this will give them time to notify his people that are living there. But it, it's whatever. Well, it's not whatever. We have to make a decision. Well, you're in the payment, uh, and Brent. You I would, say, I would say just I would say keep it as is until 
say down the road it does get sold or does get actually i would say the first step is when it goes to county and gets subdivided when it becomes four individual units but right now it's multi-residential that's what it's zoned for i would keep the waters as one as just as they've been doing it for the last six years i think we have to be, keep it consistent yeah and so that just means that sandra's going to have to continue to change the every uh, month until it does get subdivided, yes. Yeah. It concerns me that it may never get subdivided, but I yeah. think we're locked into having to go with it as it has been. It concerns me that it may never be subdivided. I would think eventually it will be sold as four units. Like, like the, only one unit could be sold. Who knows if you're going to sell the whole well, thing? Well, yeah, it could and be. Then, and, and then it's still, oh. then he's going to claim the three units that he still wants. You know what? That, so. I'm not sure if the county will allow that. They will. They, just they would allow it. one to be severed off, but not all three of them to be severed, or all four of them. All, all, four, oh. all four of those units can be subdivided mm -hmm. under front lot control by mm -hmm. bylaw of the county council. But one at a time? Yeah. They can be done you know, yeah. you know, one at a time or all of them at once. Wow. So, all so, all you could have, so, that. so this could go on. For so if a buyer comes along and buys the whole thing, it's still Potentially, going. council could, if they wanted to entertain maintaining this with the current owner, with the caveat that when the unit is either sold or that it's subdivided under part law control, at that time, the change would take place and enter into a formal agreement Okay, so sold either way. So either way. one other question. So what happens if this doesn't sell for four years and the next council is totally unaware of what's really going on? That's why you put it well, into a regulation of uh, an agreement bylaw between the municipality and the owner, and that way it moves forward with the next council as well for orientation and their discussion. Because it wouldn't change anything. It's, in my opinion, it's still the exact same. We don't have traditional agreement in writing, like generally have something formally but, but since no but I, I just thought maybe if we're charging everybody else with a meter a rate we should be charging everybody with a meter a rate well as i said that, it was the very thought, first anyway. one they came to council that council agreed to it jack got was sitting at this table good break if they got away with it for six agreed. years it's it definitely like, i know that saying. agreement was that but lesson learned if you're going to go in agreement with anybody you have to write Get it written down because it was not an indefinite agreement. I, I like and the this idea is, that it remains the way it is until it is sold. No matter which way it's sold. No, no matter which way it's sold. Yeah. Sold or severed. Sold, sold or severed. That's right. what I would say. It's changed. Well, it's fine. Okay, Brian, do you want to have something written up? I will arrange uh, an agreement between the parties drafted uh, for council for and their send something, meeting. Send something to Bob Howe just so he knows. I will. Thank you. I have number six boardwalk peer review. Came here. So we attempted to have a special meeting of council that didn't work out because Merv wasn't here, but that's okay, Merv. Don't worry about it. Don't worry. So did you have an opportunity to look over the documents? Well, I had an opportunity. And I guess we're asking for a peer review, but have we told Cambium what we wanted reviewed? Yes, Brian what, has had that discussion. What, uh, what discussion have you had, Brian? Like I've got some, I've got some concerns. Camium is prepared to review whatever documents have been prepared by the uh, group. They're not engineering this. All they are in a peer review is, is doing a legal peer review of the documentation and saying yes or no. Uh, That's that, their role. The peer review of the documentation. You mean of the drawings? Of any of the drawings to ensure that they meet the requirements, yes. And as you saw by their estimate, they're also doing a but, site visit. See, okay, well, here's I just made a few notes here. Uh, I'm, I'm concerned, I'm, I'm concerned about first of all, the, I, I call them screw piles, I've never had anything to do with them before. But you, obviously, they said the, the front row are in the solid ground, okay? The next row was going to be because of the uh, silt. They weren't going to be in the solid ground. Okay. Uh, I would like to know, could they use longer uh, screw piles to get the solid ground? Well, I think that's one of the things that we can ask of Cambium when well, we do, because they are doing a site visit. Okay. So yeah. that's yeah. a very important part of this. Yes. 
Yes, well, I, I, I'd like to, them to know if everybody agrees what we would like to know, or at least that I would like to know. Absolutely. Uh, they look like, and I think, Jack, from what I can get from the drawings, they're, they're using cross cables for stability. Mm -hmm. uh, there's no, no specs as to the tension on those cross cables, if you will. They have a cross cable like this. One goes to the bottom of the outer one, comes to the top. And uh, as you've seen what happened, I know there are not as many cables as on the bridge in, the, in Blind River or whatnot, but what happens if they, they're too tight and when it gets cold, can it pull the other one out? Or what happens, the outer one will be in water, the inner one will be, or the upper one or the closer to the shore will be in the air, and you have two feet of ice, the cables and two feet of ice. What's going to happen? I think that's all part of the engineered peer review to determine structural integrity of the okay. structure itself. The yeah, other matter, they're, they're going to the peer review has to determine if these screw jacks that they're just going to push into five and a half feet of, of mud yeah. or water or whatever it is. To, they're not they're not putting them into hydraulic pressure. That's what we were informed yeah. when they were here. They're going to be put down to this five and a half feet. That's up to the uh, peer review, the engineers to do look the at. The engineers know they're going to do that. Yeah, yeah, and they're going to have to determine if that structure is sound or not. Yeah. The other thing, the other thing that I'm looking at, looking at, like the structure looks okay to me, but there's nothing. To, well, I don't really need to know what the dead weight. What does the structure weigh? But what about a live weight? What? How much will the structure? What load will the structure take? Mm -hmm. If somewhere down the road. We decide we're not going to have dinner on the bridge anymore. We're going to have dinner on the dock. Will it hold 200 people? Well, not only that, Mer, just if you have with the fireworks people up on the dock, right, standing and watching the fireworks. Yeah. You can like what weight, what, weight, what, what weight will it design to hold? Mm -hmm. I think that's, uh, I think that these are all questions like that can be looked at. Yes. And yeah. so that, those are all part of the peer review, and that's why staff recommended that we have a third party peer review on the process because they will bring back yes or no on it definitively. And did you have an opportunity to speak with uh, Dave on Friday? Yeah. The other, the other thing is this is this is the, the grade into peer review. I mean, they're talking about raising the two feet, and I know we've had this discussion before, and I know we've been told it's impervious material. But what happens in the spring flood? The pervious material is frozen. We're going to have a pond down there. So I, but again, these, I am not an engineer and I don't purport to but be one. Neither am I, but I can so, just see these problems happening. But I, it's I, all part of the $6,500 bill that they're offering to do the peer review. And that. Well, make damn sure they review they, they everything. Would bring, they would bring back those answers if council chooses to move forward with the peer review. Can, can, uh, Merv, the one thing they have to do is is they'll be bringing answers back to us, and if we're not happy with the answers, we'll be asking them to qualify. Okay. okay. They, they don't go to, if, if what we're proposing here, what's on the table here, is that council is going to pay for this. If council is okay. going to pay for this, we're the clients. Yeah. Camion has to answer to us. Okay. That's the bottom line. Okay. And if we're not happy, well, go back and get us happy. That's the bottom okay. line, right? Okay. So but that's I think my understanding. That, well, and the, and the fact of the matter is, KDM has been our trusted engineering firm for as long as I've been sitting at this table. And I think that they've been um, excellent in communication and, and making sure that when we do have questions, that they're answered. I mean, I take us back to the Ruby Road waste site and, you know, how much work went into that. And we relied on them to give us the correct answers so that we could allay the worries of our residents around the Ruby Road site. But I think I think we have to do it. It's money well spent. We don't want to have problems further down the road. Well, it, it can't go ahead without a peer review. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I mean, this is this is the one thing we said yeah. was a really good idea because, and, and I'm going to say, Sorry, I shouldn't have said it can't go ahead without a peer review, but if this is something that staff is recommending and it will give them comfort uh, for liability and us comfort, then it it absolutely has to be done. Yep. And what was your take on the rep from Canyon? Oh, I don't do. It's fine. It went well. Okay, good. Okay. Anyways, all right. All right. So, um, are we getting direction on that? Uh, you'll have to get direction in the resolution. Those are the needs, aren't they? 
Bring a resolution for tonight. For tonight. Bring forward a resolution. Bring forward a resolution related to peer review. Yeah. Uh, I think we can blow right by number eight. What do yeah, you think? That's yeah, that's true. Right. Done, isn't it? That's, that's <laughs> done. You have anything to tell us or what? We thought we declined that. Oh, I know, right? He just yeah. wants a party. He, I, says he, he does. He, he, does. Doesn't, he, doesn't, he says he doesn't want a party, but he really wants he a party. He just wants a party. He I, can, a I can see that. Yeah. Nice DQ cake. I, I, you I, like, I, like the ice cream cake, cake in, in the summer? How are we back getting back? an ice cream cake from Renfrew? Fast. Yeah, I love it. Yeah. But not over the speed limit. Not over the speed no, limit no, on Fort no. Shoe. No. no. I wouldn't come um, Fort Shoe. No, 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 no. Fort I'm Fort. actually, listen, I'm glad Fort Shoe came up because I did receive a phone call about two weeks ago and I completely forgot about it until today. So. Yeah, and I had a visit. Uh, mm. uh, so did everybody see, okay, so let me dial back. Previous council already approved a mural on the wall across from um, Rio. It's really pretty. It's um, it's blues and it's very um, for, like the river. It, oh, do you have it with you? Yeah, yeah. it should have it. And it's done by uh, Lisa Casey, uh, who is you know our our local tattoo guru. Um, and then did everybody see the picture of the one that she that they sent? With the bicycles, with the cars, and the cars yeah, and the, yeah, yeah. So that would be across the street uh, from the country store? store. That's the one I thought you were talking yeah. about. Yeah, yeah. no, the, but the the one across from Rio was she's had this in the plans for a couple as long as the community development group's been in place. But because last last summer was forty degrees every day, they didn't think that it would cure properly. And so they're going to reprime that wall, and uh, I think she's getting started on it pretty soon. I don't. I could probably find it as well, Brent. But yeah, I've been in here somewhere. I I'll send it. But see, so you know what? I have, yeah, I had a couple of pictures. I think we got sent this morning. Oh, that's a, that's that's, that's the new one. Oh, okay. That's the one across the room. Yes, yes, yes. But the but the it was like blue waves, and it's it's really pretty. Very very sort of muted. Colors, it's it's lovely. Yeah, it'll look gorgeous on that wall. So are they doing that one, or which one? Are they They're going to start with that one, but they want approval on this one. I think this one's really cool. Yeah, it looks good. Chris was cleaning. I saw him. I think it was like a month ago. I think it was. Well, I didn't do it enhance. I mean, that's as long as. Well, and so you know um, that this, um, any fun, so they've had a lot of donations. Number one, I think Dave Kruger just offered to give more primer to prime the walls. Uh, I don't know exactly what Lisa is charging, and I'm not sure about this. Free, but we don't want to let her do it for free. No, that's, and somebody had said that in previous council, I believe it was Meredith, that, you know, you, you should also be um, contributing to these artists in our community, um, but this, any monies that we pay out come out of the line item for the community, uh, for, I'm sorry, for the Main Street Revitalization Fund. So it, there's no money from us. It's all donated and a fund that's already been approved by AMO uh, that we do need. So what did I say at the meeting? Did I say 2020 or 2021? Oh, you were gone. But I thought it was next March. It's, but anyway, there is a timeline. There is a timeline. Spend it or lose it. That's, spend, it yep, spend it or send it back. So um, I'm really happy to know that this is going ahead. And I did say to the community development group at their AGM that, you know, let's let's get together with Dana and start utilizing that money. It is sitting there. It's been approved by AMO. Dana knows exactly what it can be spent on and how to send the message to AMO to let them know what we spent it on. I just sent it to everyone just so when you're in your emails later, it'll be there. Oh. That, that's the one at the Rio, like the rough drawing for it? No, that's not. No. That doesn't look very good. No, 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 no. 
That's the. No, no, no. That's just off my phone. But... No, so... they have a they had a picture of it. Mm -hmm. It was really it's really pretty, but and very river themed. So I kind of like that the other one is more cycling, motorcycles, all that stuff. Perfect. Do we need a resolution for that then? Or just, it's just uh, I think administrative direction to Brian, sorry, through Brian to Dana with the community development group. Yeah. Yeah. Good for the second one. Perfect. Is everybody happy with the what's, new one? What's with this on the new one up there? What's with this picture? What's with what? What is this? I have no idea what that is. What is it, Jeff? <laughs> graffiti. <laughs> it is like graffiti. <laughs> it's graffiti. It kind of looks. I don't know so what that is. Might, it might be a. Like, look, it might looks like they might do like a homemade sign on it. To be honest, like maybe as like I, like a directional. I thought maybe it was a potential to have a sign. Oh, maybe yeah. that's where they want to put maybe new Todd's. It's just, it's maybe, just, maybe it's just like chalk. Mash, right like mash sign. That's, that's very good. That's, that's right. right. So, so it'll be yeah. a separate Chicago. sign on the yeah. sidewalk. That would be kind of cool. I don't think, well, I'm going to yeah, guess that it's going to be like on the wall. It's not going to be like a sign. Yeah. I would say Spain? that it's like paint. It's like a mural. Empire. Yeah, but it's up, up, it's higher than the wall, right? It is. Ruby. Substantial. All right, Ruby. William. Yeah, we could do it for our little spots, like Ruby, Oxford, okay. Scotch, Scotch Bush. The most okay. I'll, the I'll, clar I'll clarify with you the group of Dana. Because yeah. that to me is, I don't know what that is. It looks like a directional sign. I was going to say maybe choose like the New arena. Well, well, then it's going to be yeah. up on top of the fence. Yeah, well that does, what, I'll I'll get clarification please. on it, and then I didn't. Know I'll that. ask them what's going in each That'd one. A, that, I didn't that's, open a, that. that's a great idea. Yeah. You know, a here. sign that says all our little you know locations outside, Sebastopol that way, so many meters. We Scotch have Bush. one. Okay, you so know, there's one of the corners. Where's yeah. Scotch Bush? <laughs> oh, oh, we have to get it down to the meter. Scotch you know, so. Oh, I hope I hope they're in the right spot now. I heard, but speaking of signs, and I forgot about it at budget time. Our heritage sign that we put up at Cat Isle, nobody knows it's there. We got to put a sign directing people to it if they want to. Sign see to it. find okay. the sign. Sign to find the sign. Sign the sign. The sign the All right. The sign. Maybe just mention it to Bill. Um, actually, I saw the rec took up the tree in front of uh, like the tourist booth there, like where like yeah, that looks really good. I mean, I'm gonna I meant to email Ke uh, the Kevin. Yes, yeah, it does look really. But it opens clear. it up. It yeah, does. yeah, it looks really good. All right. Um, so you're gonna give us some clarification on that then, Brent? Is that first picture? Yeah. So I'm gonna yeah. get clarification on like the the one where it looks like it's uh, like the tourist signs, and then also then today I'll also uh, follow up with Steve just on the information for the adoption of the cats as well. Yes, please. So Thank and you. I'll and I'll let everyone know how how that goes. Okay. All right. Uh, quality management system operations. We did that with mm -hmm. Yeah, we did finish that off. So. Yeah. It, see, they're very smart in this office. They put stuff like that yeah, on just, the list, just so that so that we make sure we read it. It, it was on the five thirty uh, agenda too. Yeah. So they want to really make sure. It, oh no no no! That's a resolution. We have to do a resolution. Have to sign a resolution. But in the unfinished new business, it was there as well. Because there's a resolution. Oh, okay. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. So media. So was there a decision about the foreign street? Remember, by, by the in the foreign street leading into the splash pad in the ladder here. Uh, yes, we have an alternate idea for the owner of that business. No, no you're no talking about no, no, speeding. Oh, the oh, speeding. Yeah. Yes, I think children I think uh, probably children at play. So are you guys ready to put signs up? We're putting signs. Oh up? yeah. Put okay. Slow okay. children at play. Yeah. You don't want to write slow children at play because it's the way that you read it. Uh, just children at play and. Yeah, yeah, and see how it goes. Slow. Drive careful. Uh, but we do have right? the oh, no. yeah. Yeah. Slow right. Right. Why did you take it there? Before well, slow hits, they got a it. <laughs> But we do have all the barriers on it but now along that happen. side, so yeah. the vehicle can't ever yeah, divulge into the splash pad. Yes. Like if you take a drive, all the concrete pillars are along the splash pile this pad. This is more for kids at play, like in the yards. But this is coming into the Yes. 
course sign that says spike strips automatically pop up if you drive over 15 kilometers. You can get the hour. automated ones. Bang. Yeah. Right? Pop, 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 pop. Come up from the street. <laughs> they go sideways. <laughs> what else you got first? Um, so then with the uh, like boardwalk the review, you guys are going to be passing that tonight. Yeah. There's a resolution. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. That's it for me. Thanks. Yay. Yeah. Yeah. So we have to go into closed oh, okay. for there's some confusion established next meeting. I've got it written for six to bottom. Is that right? That is correct, sir. Yeah, yeah. yeah thank you. Yeah. Six the reason it's the six more than a pretty face. Well, well yeah. yeah, yeah, you are, man. Um is it a one it's at one thirty? At one thirty. Okay, perfect. Yeah. yeah. No, I find out if it's a boy or girl yeah. on the six, so because I find out if it's a boy or girl on the six. Oh, so, you do? Yeah, we won't release it until like the um, like on the weekend. You'll tell me though. Yeah, no, no. I'm just saying. Okay. Yeah, yeah, like uh yeah, because we're expecting uh, December twenty yeah, fourth. So. Let's share these. I had way too many clear liquids. Yeah, so, so, we're we're good. Good. Yeah, so August yeah. sixth we find out if it's a work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Just, yeah, just, yeah. yeah.